This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I got my swag on at the Sopper office. Wow, that's either really cool or really bad. Um, I'm I I didn't make any swag, but I my factory must grow. <laughs> I am super excited about what Lucasfilm has to offer us in the next couple of years. Yeah, it's like, uh, it seems like they're cleaning house. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 267 for Thursday, the 17th of December, 2020. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we're here for you. It's only a week to Christmas Eve, man. What you got going on? Oh, dude, I had, I had that realization earlier today that we we are exactly a week away from Christmas. What the hell happened? Like, I'm not even done with shopping. Like, what the? Mm. Like, how did this happen? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, it means we're only two weeks away from the streamathon, which that's right. I'm oh not my ready God. for. That's another thing. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's great. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about, about both things. Uh, Christmas is going to be awesome. And the Streamathon, of course, just like every year, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And yep. we've got an amazing lineup this year. Um, go to ritualmisery.com for all the details yep. on that. All the deets is. Uh, so the twins got here yesterday morning. They arrived here. They, they finished up with their finals and flew home for Christmas and New Year's. And uh -huh. we basically spent the last several days cleaning the house. And I, I was kind of wondering why, but I think everybody had a different reason. Uh, cause I mean, the twins just moved away like four months ago or something. Right. And uh -huh. my wife wanted to clean because she, uh, I think she's practicing for when we can have guests again. Amber wanted to clean because she does most of the cleaning around the house anyway. Let's just be honest. And she didn't want it to be shown up and like them show up to the house and it not be clean. And I wanted to clean because it gets everybody else off my back. <laughs> right. But the twins are here. Uh, the littles have not left them alone. And David is actually coming out of his of room to hang out with them. Of course, something about, I think Sterling bought them Nintendo Switch lights. So they've been playing oh. together, but I, I don't know. Um, it's all weird to me, but anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yesterday we went, so they got here, they got here yesterday and we immediately went to Walmart to do the, our annual big, big shopping run with my sister-in-law's 25% mm. discount. So we could restock up on soap and all that other stuff. Oh, uh, right. Almost yeah. got an iPad pro, but my wife was like, no, we're, we're going to wait until it's a, you know, basically she said, wait until the M1 version of the iMac comes out and I was like, you just gonna tell me to wait on that too. So we had a little disparity of <laughs> of issues in the store. But other than that, it went really smooth. And now the house is trashed again because we have all this shit, but we don't have anywhere to put it. Because most of our supplies are still full from last year. Uh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hoarder. You're a hoarder is what I'm learning. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> we're not it we're not Wrong. hoarders. We are well prepared. So like when COVID hit, everybody was running out buying toilet paper, but we had about a two month supply on hand. Yeah, well that that's that's me too. Like I, I'm like that's because the... I, I I'm on the Amazon subscription thing. Yeah. And um our I had to cut back on the frequency of the toilet paper shipment actually because we yeah. we've got like a closet full of toilet paper. <laughs> well, we our uh, our furnace closet, you know, the the HVAC room. Yep, the yep. HVAC's in the very corner, circuit breaker's on the side. Everything else is shelves, and all those shelves are cleaning supplies, toilet paper, uh, uh, tissues, uh, shampoo, toothpaste, all that stuff. Like, we have all that stuff in there. And over the last four years, my sister-in-law's worked at Walmart. We've basically built our own little HBA, you know, our little home section of Walmart in our, in our furnace closet. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we there's never a time when we're like, hey, do we have laundry detergent? No, we got a we got a shelf of it. You know, we may go hungry because there ain't shit to eat in this house, but we will be able to be clean. We'll be clean, right. starving people. Wonder Woman in the in the Twitch chat has a good point. She says, "COVID is the 2020 zombie apocalypse test run." Uh, no doubt, that is no doubt. Yeah, yeah I agree. 
Yeah, and uh, and thanks to COVID, I now have enough ammunition, weapons, and cleaning the supplies that all I have to do is eat people, and I'm fine. Yeah, so so you've got enough ammunition and weapons to defend your toilet paper supply. Legit. Uh, Amos, uh, d- what are your thoughts about Sapper? Like wh- when I say Sapper, what comes to your mind? So three things come to mind when you see Sapper. Sapper is sexual assault prevention and response. Response. Yeah. Um, it's the Air Force's way of trying to deal with the fact that a lot of people were getting raped and groped and nobody was doing anything about it because of the good old boy system. Sapper. Yeah. And also, it's uh, it's not just Air Force, it's, it's Department of Defense. Well, yeah, but Sapper is the Air Force version of it. Like Army has well, Army calls it something it, slightly different. No, no, it's all it's all Sapper. It's DOD. I, I looked it up. Okay. Well, it wasn't when I last checked, so fuck off. Um, <laughs> in particular, we're talking about the Air Force Air Force version of it, though, because that's what right. you ha- well, still have to go through. Uh, yeah. Sapper brings to mind three things. One, the hooch, because I was constantly aware of women who were getting drunk, and I, I actually escorted many of them home just to make sure they got home safe because I felt it was my responsibility yep. as uh, hooch daddy to make sure that my patrons at the hooch were taken care of two is when i was in korea we did a theater group for sapper where we would go through and um uh like enact scenarios yeah, in, where in, in, improv scenarios where things like that you know sexual assault and things like that might happen and kind of show the good side and the bad side and that was a lot of fun but it's a very serious topic and the performances were amazing and the third thing is, holy shit, what a huge waste of time. Because they yeah, tell you, yeah. they basically try to drill it into your mind when it really only takes five minutes for you to know the basics of the program. And anything after that yeah. is either going to get ignored because you are a sexual assault, like a predator, or you understand and therefore you know the responses to take and you're not going to be put in the situations in the first place. So That's right. So, yeah, so... Right. So the message of Sapper is actually very valid. It's it's important, right? Like, not only, I mean, it's obvious, don't fucking rape people, right? But also just the, you know, the idea of, uh, you know, c- creating safe environments for all people mm-hmm. and look out for, you know, people doing wrong shit. You know, like walking home with a drunk girl from the bar. Like, you know, you want you want the right people doing that. You don't want, like... You know what I mean? Like you, the things to look out for, right? Um, so it's a good message, but also it's an understood message for. I mean, especially at this point with um, how many years we are into the Sapper program being a thing, Air Force members, we got it. Thanks, um, but it's it, it's one of those ever present things. It's it's mentioned at every commander's call. It's it's in every. You can't get away from it. The messaging is fucking everywhere to include on swag yes swag that tells you to not rape people and also oh but if you were raped here's the phone number right Right. which that is the most valid thing that they that they do offer is the support for victims um i'm not going to disparage that at all i'm only any shade that i'm going to cast on sapper is the i guess the the mass market messaging right um, but the, anyway, so swag, you know about, about swag, right? You've gotten some sapper swag before. I have sapper swag. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, have, I have sapper, I have a rape whistle and I have sapper chapstick. And at one point it was a very short run, but somewhere around my house, I have a sh- a sapper shot glass, which I thought was fucking ironic. Right. Okay. So before <laughs> I show you the, the the goodies that I got the other day, the most ironic and hilarious thing that I've gotten. Well, not not so much ironic. I guess it, in some ways it's appropriate. I'll let you guys judge. But but the funniest thing to me that I ever got as sapper swag was a bottle of hand lotion in the shape of a hand. Yes. Okay. So that <laughs> that was a that was a real um, that was real silence. Okay. Um, so I I don't know what to say in response to that. 
<laughs> because nothing that my brain says should come out of my mouth is appropriate that I want in, as a legacy on the internet. Right. right. Well, I, I felt I felt weird about putting this in the show notes in the first place because it it feels weird to make light of sexual assault and whatnot, and that's not what I'm doing. Just for the record, not making light of sexual assault. I'm making light of the DOD's response to it, I mm -hmm. guess, mm -hmm. uh, which is all this fucking swag. So if you don't believe me, I'm going to show you this menagerie of things that I collected. Uh, a couple of days ago, we had a like a staff meeting that we had to go to at the at the wing at uh, the headquarters building, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the the classroom or whatever whatever it is um, that we had our meeting in, there was like ten of us in the room, ten or twelve of us in the room, I guess, socially distanced and masked, of course. Um, but right next door in that hallway, the very next door over is the sapper office, and outside of their office in the hallway was a Christmas tree. And underneath the Christmas tree was just, it looked like like the, the swag wagon fucking puked under this Christmas tree, <laughs> right? So before we went into the, into the meeting, cause I got there like, you know, 10 or 12 minutes early, right? And before we went in, I was like, that means oh, you were three we or four here? minutes late. Yeah, yeah, well, right. But I was the second person to show up out of the 12, right? So. Who was actually late? No, but I, so I anyway. So I, I got under the tree. Well, I say I got under the tree. I, I knelt down next to the tree and went through some of the swag. And this is what I walked home with. So I got this device, which looks like a pen, mm -hmm. right? But it's actually it is a uh, device that I'm going to keep in my car because this is like one of those things that you like break a, a window with. Oh right. Like if you get like like you know trapped underwater because mm -hmm. that's I, apparently a problem. If you look at the market saturation for products to like bang your your the glass out of your windows if you're trapped underwater, like you would think that's like a, a a problem. Like people are constantly getting like trapped in their cars underwater. Also, um, the solution but, but, is almost free. You just just any broken porcelain will shatter the glass. <laughs> yeah, like, there's so many other ways. Uh, but anyway, so it, it does that right. But it's also got got a little flashlight. Oh, so you can see your way underwater once you break the glass. Right. And also, if you if you take it apart, it's got a screwdriver. It's got a Phillips screwdriver. And then if you take the bit out and flip it around, it's a common screwdriver. Wow. So this is like a super cool gadget, right? It's like the world's so weirdest multi-tool. So I also, and I haven't opened this yet, uh, but I got a, uh, a wall adapter for... Um, for, you know, for charging it, so you got a USB mm -hmm. uh, thing here. These things are like, I, I was at Walmart earlier today, and um, they sell these things in the checkout lane for like $6. Mm. But uh, hey, just go to the Sapper Christmas tree, and you can get one. <laughs> I got a, uh, so I got this thing. It's like a, um, so basically it's kind of like a pop socket thing. It's you a phone you wallet. The, you, you throw it, yeah, you throw it on the back of your phone, yeah. right? It's got uh, it's got place for you you know you put a uh, you know your your driver's license maybe a couple bucks or some change or your ATM card or something like that in there um, and it's got this little this little thing here that's like a little kickstand or whatever gotcha, kind of like a yeah. pop um, I I was a little disappointed that it didn't have a bottle opener though but um, that would <laughs> that would fall into that ironic category. yeah that would not be on message well actually I've got a bottle opener that's got AADD on it. Which is uh, airmen but, against drunk driving. But that is on message. <laughs> well, I mean, because okay. if you have a bottle opener, it reminds you every time you open your bottle, hey, I should call somebody and get a ride home and not not drive home myself. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So I also got this thing, which is the, like the New Mexico little... flag on a sticker thing. Yes. So what it is? So it's adhesive. It's one of those like it's not sticky at all, but it will adhere to like anything. Uh huh. But it's it's microfiber on the other side, so you can clean your phone screen. Uh, also, this is right, the worst this is swag final, ever. This is so my final one is I got a fidget spinner. You got a sapper fidget spinner? Yes. Is and that, not is, only is, is that is, spinner, is, hold on, wait, there's more. It lights up three different settings.
I got a snapper fidget spinner, dude. Like I couldn't pass that up. I don't. I don't know where my fidget spinners are. I haven't been using them. <laughs> Uh, so, so in case you're thinking, Hey, I should go out and rape somebody tonight. You can be like, no, just use this. And this'll, this'll ease your tension. Yes. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. So when I, when I feel like raping, I'm like, Oh, you know what? Never mind. I've got my, I got my light up fidget spinner. I'm not going to rape now. <laughs> um, I'm trapped underwater. I'm trapped underwater. And instead of raping somebody while I'm trapped in my car underwater, I'm going to use this and not rape anybody. Um, wow. Uh, anyway, uh, it's crazy. I, I, I will, in, I, I in will tell chat. you, I bet Deuce knows what we're talking about. Yeah. I will it's, tell you the most, the, the, the best thing I ever got. And I have somehow you put a picture from the air, Alaska air national guard in here that I probably sent you at one point or another. I, uh, I, I Googled it. It was a Google image search. Okay. Uh, I used, I don't know where this is. I wish I could find it. Um, I'm going to bring it up to the, oh, where the hell is that screen browser? There it is. This screen, th this, th right here, um, these little, little, little round things right here are amazing. They're like the little pads that you put your wrist on, you put your arm on on the table to keep, from, you know, the carpal tunnel thing going. It's like a little bubble oh. jelly pack. And I Ouch. have one, and I can't find it, and it was Sapper, and it would look just like this. I probably got it from this table. Uh, and I can't, I don't know where the hell it is, but yeah, that thing was amazing. I used it for three years until I just recently lost it. My kids yeah. took it and played with it. Well, and that's the thing. Like, they've got neat little gadgets and, and little things that you're you're, you're probably going to use them. You know, but it's just it's just weird. Like, that's that's what they spend their budget on is... This car, I I don't know. It's just it's just a weird. It's one of those weird Air Forceism things that yeah. I'm not really sure what to do with. Right. <laughs> um, I I don't know what to do with my factory. Yeah. So so how man, so how how's that going? So for a couple of weeks now, you've been talking about Factorio, which is yeah. a uh, which is kind of like a city building. It's uh, Minecraft RPS and Sim right? City combined into one kind of. Yeah, and this is remind me, is this is this RTS style or, yes. or turn based? No, it's RTS. Okay, right, all right. Um yeah. so I built a factory, I built several factories and finally got one to stick and I was built I I beat I beat the game, like you know, you launched launched my first rocket into space. And then I tried mm -hmm. to okay, well how big can I make my factory? You know, what what can I add? I've added so much and as I'm adding, I'm realizing that I've messed up in the very beginning. Like if you want to beat the game and you're going to use trains, you can use a one locomotive, four car train. But if you're going to go for a mega base and just have a huge base, you have to go with the three locomotive, eight car train. Okay. Those two are not compatible with each other because once you size everything for, for five, basically five train spots, you can't go to 11. Like you can't stretch things out without <laughs> moving entire swaths of the factory over to make room for the loading area and the unloading. Spinal t only Spinal Tap can go to eleven. Oh my gosh, it's uh, it's 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 amazing. It's fun. I I I really I'm still enjoying the the puzzle of it, even though I use a lot of blueprints. And you know, some people would be like, "Well, that's not the pure experience." They can fuck off. Um. I, it's, it's, God, it's a fun game. I want to play a multiplayer. I, I don't know if I could play competitive because I'm still fumbling my way around like all the nuance. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a, it's a ton of fun. Like if you enjoy SimCity and, you know, City Skylines, or if you enjoy Minecraft, like you would probably enjoy this because it's kind of a blend where you're building things and you have to, you know, resource management and all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, you're, you have basically full control over everything that's going on. Mm. It's yeah, and biters suck. I had to, I had to, I, I had to build a nuclear power plant just to power my lasers in order to fend off the biters. <gasps> oh fuck biters! Yeah, so my my the newest one that I just started today doesn't have biters. And biters are th those are like uh, they're the native like life zombies, forms right? on the planet. No, they're they're more like uh they, they look more like crawfish. 
Uh, oh! But they are the okay. native life forms on the planet, and as you begin building your factory, you cause pollution. Oh, so you're the, so you're the villain. You're the villain of the game. No, no. <laughs> um, the story the storyline is you're floating. You're displacing. You're displacing the native population. Like I kind of feel like you're the villain. No, no. You 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 got it all wrong, man. Uh, <laughs> The storyline is you crash on a planet and you're trying to escape, and the best, the only way to escape oh. is to send up a rocket so you can you can signal to other people that where you are. So you have to build stuff to make the rocket to send the signal to escape. That's all you want to do is just get off the planet until you do that <sighs> once or twice. And <laughs> Curtis says this is colonialism. The game. Well, no, because you're not you're not you're not sub- subjugating the local life forms. You're eliminating them. You're so, just killing them. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, there's a difference. It's, it's not genocide. colonialization. It's, not it's yeah, it's more genocide. Because that's than better somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's entirely better. God damn. They're not intelligent. They just keep running into shit that you put in their way. Like, <laughs> it's not it's not it's not a big loss. It's a genocide the game. What yes. even is this episode? Oh my god. We're going we're, <laughs> man, we're going places this episode. Oh shit. It's the end of the year. We've run out of all the uh all the softballs. So if you like if you like talking about rape and genocide and colonialism, head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and support our endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> and you can add cocktail hours and random conversations with other people in there for the low, low price of just $1 a month. <laughs> oh, man. There's all kinds of stuff over there. There's, there's uh, uh, exclusive interviews. There's pre-shows, post-shows, all the things that Amos talked about, plus uh, all, all kinds of um, additional benefits to being a patron, like discounts to the swag shop, where if you yep. go to ritualminster.com slash swag, you will see exactly what kind of swag you could possibly get some discounts on. Or even... Free swag, well, quote, I, free swag if you're at a appropriate patron levels. I tell you what, I've been on a run lately of helping people with their podcasts and uh-huh. helping them with their audio stuff and helping them set things up and websites and this and that. I'm uh-huh. I'm not going to help people unless they're a patron now. Ooh. I mean, not really, but kind of really. Like, oh. <laughs> You will feel especially motivated to... Yeah, there you go. There you go. I will feel especially motivated to assist you in anything that I know more than more of than you uh, if if you are a patron at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's all kinds of unexpected benefits of being a patron over there. Patreon.com slash ritual misery. And uh, by the way, we still owe Mark Jelinek a special treat for the 22222. Oh, that's right. That's he, right. He was the second person to respond. Mark is one of the one of the best of us, by the way. Yeah. I love Mark Blanick. He's he's not gonna be in the in the streamathon this year, which makes me sad. Yeah, yeah. Well in in uh one one of the great things about the streamathon and and uh, the momentum that the streamathon has is that more and more people are signing up earlier and earlier and earlier. And our schedule fills up faster and faster every single year. Yeah. And he didn't sign up in time. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, like, and that's that's the thing. And I'm really looking forward to what the streamathon is going to do in the future. But but what we're really looking forward to right now is two weeks from today is the New Year's Eve streamathon, and we're going to raise a bunch of money for sick kids. Yep. Um... Extra org extra dash life dot org slash is it dctv what is our team name it's uh slash life dot org slash team slash something if you look up just diamond club dude dude you're you're doing too much man just go to ritualmisery.com and the link is there <laughs> exactly do that ritualmisery.com this has guy. All... um go ahead and go ahead and slap that that button you well, got well if I slap it, I'll probably end up hitting the keyboard and other buttons, and I'm not sure that's what you want. So I'm going hey, to. I'm not going to take your method. I'm going to gently press the button instead. I I really like when people say button, not button. 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 It just has like a. Sir, sir, could you please press the button? Like when my wife calls the trash rubbish. 
Like, <laughs> could it, you put it in the bin? Yeah. Sir, please put the rubbish right. in the bin. Curtis LaRock says, caress the button. So I'm going to caress <laughs> the button. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! I cannot contain myself either. And also, by the way, thank you, Big Voice Jay. Thank you, Stephen Cogswell, for um, contributing to that. And actually, all actually a lot of people contribute to that. So thanks, thanks everyone. I just this, thought of and, I just thought of what we're going to do to thank Mark. Oh, oh. We'll start yeah. it on the first show of twenty. His button. Button. My wife still still yells at me about saying elementary. She's like, why, are, why, are you, why is it like fifteen syllables? Yeah, that's how you say it. Terry, it's it elementary. Word. Like, change it to elementary. It's elementary. And change it. No, 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 just make that one little tweak, and it would just annoy her like sixfold. But I, that's just it. I'm not saying it any other way than what I naturally say it. So it, <laughs> if I were if I were to adjust how I naturally say it, then all of a sudden now I'm like leaning into what she has a problem with. I. So, so tangent to a tangent. So my son Lucas, my oldest son, he I used to make fun of him. In fact, like the whole family used to make fun of him. <laughs> and I feel bad. Wow. But you know, you know like, like the the garments that you wear, like what do you call them? Like collectively? Clothes. Right. Okay. So clothes, clothes, right, right. But he used to emphasize the TH sound when he would clothes. say it. Clothes. Like he would say clothes. So we would all like we would gang up on him and make fun of him like clothes, clothes, clothes. At least he like, wasn't I'm, saying clothes. So that was a thing. That was like a like a family like an inner family meme for right. like know, two months or something like that. Right? We gave him shit for a little while. Well, then on my second viewing of of the Auntie Donna show on Netflix. I had Lucas watch it with me. And there's an episode, it's like the third or fourth episode, I think. There's a sketch that they do where I don't know why, I don't know where this comes from, but they they're all like all three of them are saying clothes, but they keep like like emphasizing the TH more and more, mm. like the more that they say it. So it's like it starts out as clothes, but then it's like clothes and then like clothes and like and then i'm watching this with luke and i'm dying like i've got like tears coming out of my eyes and he's like what the fuck like why is this so funny i was like you do you remember like three or four years ago like when we were making fun of you no i say three or four it's like five or six seven years ago it was a while ago he's like yes i know like i think he's got scarring from this so what do you say that people make fun of Do you oh, have anything what, that people... What do I say? Oh, yes. Yes. How I say measure. So I'm saying measure right now. The way that I'm saying measure is because of how I've been made fun of with my Indiana accent saying measure. Uh, I get... You know, with, for, for saying measure. Yeah. When I, I... Like, I got super self-conscious thinking that this is a Kent thing. This is a me thing. Like, I, I'm fucking this word up. Right? <laughs> Every time I'm watching a TV show or listening to a podcast or anything, and I hear somebody from the Midwest, they say measure. They do not say measure. Yeah. It's not me. It's not my fault. This is my upbringing. Uh, Warsh is the same way. <laughs> yes, but I, I corrected Warsh as a child. Like yeah. I was probably 10 when I called my mom and my grandma out for saying a letter that's not there um for uh, uh second grade someone made fun of me in second grade one of my mom's friends made fun of me in second grade saying warsh and i picked up on it then the other one that i say that that um that people don't like is library wait what library as opposed to what library oh yeah yeah my used to say library like uh, it's we're it's, going to the library like you're going to go to the grocery store and pick up some strawberries and some grapes and some libraries no it's a library there's an extra right. r in there yep. now My, used to say library but she's also the same aunt that used to say valentine's day 
Oh. With an N. Valentine's. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, hey, dude, you got a game? Let's go. <laughs> we went on a little tangent there. Um, Welcome man, to the show. Like... Should I play the intro music? Are we ready to go now? <laughs> right, here we go. Right. So the name of the game this week is How Much Wind is in Your Willow? Uh, okay. How much do you know about the movie Willow? None. Oh, well, you're going to suck at this game. All right. It is all about the movie Willow, one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> this goes this goes along with the uh, what our main topic is going to be tonight. Yes. Um, so just so, just so you know, this is I, I found. So every question on here, I stole. It, I stole ten questions from a fifteen question quiz, and I got fifteen out of fifteen on the quiz myself. So I'm very curious to see how you do. Um, so all these questions are about the movie Willow. They're multiple choice, but if you answer correctly before i give you the choices you're going to get two points if you answer correctly after i give you the choices you're going to get one point are you ready sir i am what is willow's last name wind of the all right your choices are <laughs> baggins gelfin Davis or Ufgood? Ufgood. Ufgood is correct for one point. Oh, my lights are the, on. The infant, Alora Dannon, is identified as the prophesied child that Morda has been waiting for by a special birthmark. Where is the birthmark located? On his leg. I had six options. I picked one of them. Actually, yeah. Your choices are arm, back, forehead, or palm? Forehead. God damn. Have you even seen Willow? Yes. When I was okay. 10. All right. So uh, uh, you got no points. Um, the, the birthmark is on her arm. <laughs> tells you tells you how this is gonna go, but right now I'm sitting at fifty percent, which passes in 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 Wait, Indiana. You said his leg. <laughs> so like, oh, this is not gonna go well. Okay, all right. Next question: What do the little people, which are also known as Nelwins, by the way, Nelwins? Uh, what do the what do the Nelwins? What do the little people of Willow's region call full-sized humans? Biggins. <laughs> Your choices are Earthers, Muggles, Dikinis, or Breland. Say it again, you went digital. Muggles, Earthers, Dikinis, Brelanders. Brelanders. Mm. That might have been the case if this was Middle Earth, but... Uh, no. Uh, it's Dakinis. Okay, well, it wasn't Muggles. <laughs> right. You're correct. It was not Muggles. Muggles are people that don't geocache. And also something with Harry Potter. <laughs> that was actually my introduction to the term Muggles, which, thank you for introducing me to geocaching like fucking a million years ago. <laughs> but, yes, anyway. Okay, moving on. What is the name of Bad Morda's violent henchman who wore a skull mask in battle? Jimmy. Your choices are General Roper, Eric, Sorsha, or General Kale. General Kale. Or Eric. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, okay, General cool. Kale is correct. I'm still sitting at 50%. Yeah, actually, I'm not going to tell you who Eric is yet. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Uh, all right, next question. Eric. <laughs> Transformed by Bav Morda's magic, the good sorceress Finn Rizel takes many animal forms throughout the film. What is she when Willow first meets her? Mouse. Not a bad answer, but not correct. Your choices are goat, crow, tiger, possum. Possum. 
Did you get that right only because I said you were close? No. No, I, that's <laughs> one of the one of the few things I remember is this fucking possum or this rodent running around the entire movie. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, goat, crow, tiger, and possum are all forms that she took during that, the movie. That's fine. The one I remember is the rodent. Yeah. Okay. Right on. <laughs> that's what she was when you first meet her. All right. When Willow blasts a troll with Sherlindria's wand and kicks it into a moat, it transforms into a huge two-headed beast. <gasps> what is that beast called? A goat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the only one during this whole quiz, during, during the 15 question version, that I wasn't certain of. Okay. So this is a, this is the hardest question in, in the quiz because I don't think it's actually stated in dialogue in the movie. Gotcha. All right, so the name of the two-headed beast... You need to read subtitles. Is it Eversisk, Ghidorah, Siskabert, or Smaug? Well, it's not Smaug. What kind of stupid okay. answer is that? Okay, so your remaining choices are Eversisk, Ghidorah, Siskabert. Eversisk. It is, in fact, an Eversisk. Boom. I got this. I get this right by by elimination because obviously Smaug is is the uh, dragon. The dragon. <laughs> oh, Smaug! What? what? I'm kidding. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's the it's the big bad in in the Hobbit, right? I and then I, so, Zilla, that, That's that's one of Godzilla's enemies. This is a three headed three headed dragon. Okay. From Godzilla lore. And then, um, yeah, Cisco. So I, I came down to Eversisk and Siskabert. I don't know what the fuck a Siskabert is, but it sounds too stupid to be in like something. Siskabert real. is Bert and Ernie's aunt. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he was kind of a drag. Um, I so I just finished reading a book in which one of my favorite characters of Dragonlance dies. Again? Was it Raceland Majir? No. Flit Fireforge? No, although he is mentioned. Stern Brightblade? Oh, oh, oh. I'm going with Tasselhoff Burfoot. Tasselhoff Burfoot. Oh, my favorite character in Dragonlance. Margaret Weiss was kind enough not to make you relive his death. He basically just disappears, and you kind of know what happened. Yeah. But also leaves it open in case some other shit goes down later on. <laughs> so the saddest thing in Dragonlance for me was Tasselhoff's reaction to Flint's death. Yeah. That fucking destroyed me. Everybody talks about Sturm's death. Yeah. And that, in fact, was the thing during our interview with Fun Wise that made her actually cry on our interview with her. Yeah, that touched a lot of people. I never gave a fuck about Sturm. He was noble in his death, and that made me feel something. Um, but I wasn't sad to see him go. I, Rick, Rick, on the other hand, fucked me up. When Sturm died, I was actually more concentrating on. I don't. I guess. I mean, it's. I guess it's been thirty something fucking years. I don't have to worry about spoiling it. When Sturm died, I was more worried about. Like, I wouldn't say worried, but I was more intrigued about the dynamic between Laurel and Thalissa and Kitiara. Okay, sure. Well, I was more. I was more Cause concerned Sturm, about the overall. Stern because dying was, like, was kind of like, like a given. Like you knew that it, the first time you meet Sturm, you know he's going to die a valiant death. Like it's just. Oh yeah, I mean that's if you yeah. if you've ever read a book before in your life, yeah, you right. know that. But yeah, so that was kind of like okay, well that happened. Trigger this three or four line conversation between Lorana and Kitiara. And that was what really got me. And then yeah. Lorana was actually in the books I just finished. Yeah. So, so the whole the whole dynamic between Lorana and Kitiara, it's it's basically the reason that they've got beef is because of Tannis Half Elven. Yes. 
which was a you know one was a former lover and one was the current lover <laughs> and it's like anyway all right so enough of enough of nerding out on Dragonlands. Uh, back right. to question seven <laughs> of our of our Willow quiz. We might need to have a patron only conversation just about Dragonlands because I I have I have thoughts. You have things to say. I do. It's so all cool. right. The the forest spirit Sherlindria cryptically prophesies that Alora Dana will be raised by a good king and queen in the kingdom of Tirasleen. Whom do the good king and queen turn out to be? Um. So at the end of the movie, there's a good king and queen that's going to raise Alora Dannon. Who are they? Uh, Willow and his sister. Okay. Your choices are. <laughs> your choices are Mad Mardigan and Rizel. Yes, that. Hold on. There's three more choices. Willow and Sorsha, Mad Mardigan and Sorsha, or Willow and Rizel? I'm going to stick with A. I'm going to stick with my original wrong with answer. A. Mad Mardigan and Rizel. Yeah. Uh, you're half right. In fact, I'll give you I'll give you a point 0.5. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw this in here. Point 0.5. Because that's going to matter. Uh, it, it's, in fact, Mad Mardigan and Sorsha. Well, I mean, sounds good. Looks good on paper. <laughs> Which uh, so a little little side trivia. So uh, Mad Mardigan was played by Val, Val Kilmer. Kilmer. Yep, back yep. in the skinny and days. Sor yep, and Sorcerer was played by Joanne Whaley. And after this movie, they ended up getting married. In how real long, life. How long did that last? Oh, I mm, several years. I don't know how many, but uh, about a Hollywood lifetime. Yeah, okay. pretty much. All right, question eight. Was, was she married to him in to when he was in Top Gun? No, Top Gun was way before Willow. Oh, okay. Well, not way before, but but significantly before. Ah, see, okay. Yeah. All right. What was the name of Willow's wife? It's not Sorsha. <laughs> Rizel. That would be for a weird movie. You say Rizel? Okay. The choices are Eric or the, the choices are Mara, Kira, Kaya, or Sarah. Mira. You're going with well, Mira's not even a choice. Mara, Kira, Kaya, or Sarah. I say Mira, combination of the first two, because they're both wrong. <laughs> All right, the correct answer was Kaya. Number nine. The head sorcerer of Willow's village tests potential apprentices with this riddle. The power to control the universe is in which finger? What's the correct answer? Uh, this one. <laughs> um, elaborate. Pretend I can't see your video and describe what you're saying. The power resides in the, the third finger from the left on my right hand. Okay. Your choices are your own finger, mm. thumb, mm. pinky, mm -hmm. or the king's finger. Your own finger. So you can pick your boogers. Your own finger is the correct answer. It's really hard to pick your boogers with the king's finger. <laughs> yes. Unless you're the king. Try to get the king to do that. All right, your final question. Queen Bav Morda resided in which castle? Um, Nakafuku Shuku. Okay. Your choices are... Your choices are Minas Morgul. No. Grayskull. No. Tizlin or Nakmar. Nakmar. You're going with Nakmar, and yeah. you would be correct. Woohoo! I got so, like a sixty-five percent on this quiz. Like, I'm feeling pretty good about it. You got exactly a sixty-five percent. If this was a WAFS test, I'd call it a win. Which you know what this means? Hmm. The sixty-five percent. You got the D plus a little tip. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we not have a stinger for you got the D? Like, how how is this not? 
Because you haven't gotten the balls to ask anybody that makes stingers to make a stinger that says you got the D. <laughs> it hasn't even occurred to me till now. Like we need to, we need that. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue that. Um, yeah. So congratulations on getting the D this week. I'm very surprised with. Um, well, first of all, I was surprised that you don't know Willow. But after I knew that you didn't know Willow, I'm surprised that you got the D. Uh, well, I, most of those had another reference that made it obviously not that one. So it's really only a choice of three. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, actually, if I really wanted to, to, to grade this on, on some kind of a curve here, you would actually have only scored a three, no, a, yeah, three point, no, three, uh, three. Well, whatever, whatever half of sixty-seven is, uh, six point five. It'd be a three point three point two five, is what you would have scored because you had a potential score of twenty, and you got six point five. Yeah, I like my math better. But whatever, I am calling it a. You got it. You got a D. You got. It can't. Uh, what what happened that made you end up in this picture? <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Okay, so right after our show last week, my son Lucas came up to me and is like, Dad, did you see the Lucasfilm announcement? And I was like, What well, yeah, I, I, I saw the Bad Batch trailer and I, I I sent you the link to that. He's like, Dad, no. No. That was only one announcement out of many. I'm like, oh, do tell. Uh, yeah, so look, so d last week, Disney had their investor call, which they they had a presentation of all of these properties that they're going to put out into the world, right? Um, Lucasfilm had their own little section, which was a lot of Star Wars stuff and, and a plus a couple of other Lucasfilm properties. Marvel had theirs with a whole slate of things. There was a Pixar piece and Disney animation and a bunch of stuff, right? Um, I was excited about a lot of those things, but the one that, that as, you know, as a diehard Star Wars fan, the Lucasfilm announcement blew my mind. Right. And um, had me in a puddle, basically, <laughs> by the time I was done reading about all of these things and watching all of the trailers and sizzle reels and all the things that went along with it. Um it and was it, it was more than thirty announced projects over just the Pixar, uh, uh, Star Wars, and uh, what was the other one? Marvel. Marvel projects. There are, there are ten each of those three properties alone. Yeah, and this, that doesn't even touch Disney animation, Disney, right. and just like straight up Disney live action and and various right. like. You know, previous Fox properties and they're they're like of... here's ten Pixar, here's ten Star Wars, and here's ten uh, Marvel. Just it was just here you go. It was an incredible announcement. So what I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to go one by one through the through the Lucasfilm announcements and just get get our thoughts, okay. like share our thoughts with uh, what our impressions are. Real quick. I want to share my thoughts on why they announced so much of their roadmap across so many properties at this time. Okay. And I think it's obvious, but if you, if you haven't paid attention, you might miss it. They are bleeding right now because of coronavirus. The yeah. parks are essentially dead. They're losing tons of money. They're laid off so many of their workers. They're Usually the parks are the money makers and they just roll in cash. And right now the parks are just an anchor keeping the rest of the country, the company down. Well, so, yeah, but also like the, like the movies, like the movie theater, like brings in like a, a ton of money for their productions. Yeah. Well, oh, wait, right. there hasn't been a movie in the theaters in like nine months. Right. So when they, when they had their investor call, they were announcing basically bad numbers Every like Disney Plus massively overperformed. They they hit the numbers uh, last week. They said or last quarter they hit the numbers that they weren't projected to hit until 2022. Like Disney Plus is huge. However, as a company, they're still not making the money 
and they don't have the market share, the, the, the thought share that they typically would. So in order to qualm, qualm any fears that the shareholders had, they had to announce something and show that they were doing something with all this time on their hands. And that's yeah. why this big announcement. Came well, out. It, and, and the crazy thing, like Disney Plus is kind of the savior in this in this um, situation, because Disney Plus came at the right time because it came out just over a year ago. What was yep. it? October, or November yep. of of last year. Yep. Um, yeah. Dis Disney Plus is keeping them afloat. Like and I can't even imagine what they're they would be probably in the red. Uh, if Disney Plus was Squid, not Squid any, saying uh, Squid in the chat, Squid's mixtape in the chat says Disney parks usually break even in the movies as <clears throat> the money makers. True. However, well, the sure, parks sure. the parks are the mind share aspect of it. Well, and and also like so the parks still exist and require maintenance. So there's still people working, but yeah. they're not ha they don't have the income to maintain the parks. Right. But. But you, yeah, you, so, you, yeah. you will not have. I mean, if you have a small child go to Disney World or Disneyland, they will see every movie you put out, and they'll make their trip to to uh, to 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 uh, um, McDonald's just for the toys. And it, like, you, you want to talk about events that you know the bleed blue events, right? The things the Air Force would do to get everybody all hyped up about being in the Air Force. That right, that right, is yeah. that is piss compared to the excitement the little kids have about Disney when they leave a Disney park. Like it lasts years. That excitement lasts for a Oh, for sure. My kids are still talking about the trip we took three years ago to Disney. You know, like they've spent over half their life now almost talking about the trip we took three years ago. Yeah, it's it's an iconic brand. Like the, the brand value of Disney is prob probably surpasses Everything like what? What brand is more valuable than Disney? I don't. Right. I don't know. But but yeah, the, the the parks may not make the money, but they seal the mind share, and that's how the rest of the money is made. So anyway, yeah. So so all right. So our first announcement oh, yeah. was we a are, movie. As I have not gone down and read the details of these, because as soon as we into the show last week, you talked about it, and I had planned on reading it, and I was like, you know, I'll save it for the show. I want you to sell me on each of these properties. Oh Jesus! Well, now, okay. Granted, All it's right. not a it's not a tough sell, but I want you to give me enough information to get me excited, but not so much as that I'm bored. Oh God! Okay. All right. So I had a couple of them that I wasn't super excited about, but I'm gonna get real excited about them real quick here. <laughs> okay. So maybe maybe at the end of this, you can tell me which ones I wasn't actually excited about. Okay. So the first one. Is called Rogue Squadron. This mm -hmm. is a movie that's coming out three years from now. It's it's a Christmas season 2023 film uh, called Rogue Squadron, and it's going to be directed by Patty Jenkins. I am so thrilled for this. Patty Jenkins, as you may or may not know, is the director of the Wonder Woman films. I th like out of the the DC EU or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, the best thing that has come out of that by far is Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. and Patty Jenkins is is like ninety percent of why. She uh, she's she directed fantastic. She directed the first one. Did she direct nineteen eighty four as well? Yes. Oh fucking yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, Patty Jenkins is fantastic, and and we get introduced to this idea. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I have to say on the Wonder Woman aspect, sure. Gal Gadot is gorgeous. She fits the role very well, but the movies would have fit with any other good actress that was taking that role as seriously as Gal Gadot did. Gal Gadot gets a lot of the of the 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 pompousness of the movies like, "Oh my god, it's so good because Gal Gadot." I think it's mutually beneficial. I think Gal Gadot was so good because of the movie and the directing and the production value. And well, I synergy. think she brought it's synergy, yeah. right? Like, like you had the right, you had the right cast, you had the right director. Right. Like I, I do like. Don't get me started about the Chris Pine shit. Uh, but other than that, um, the, like the cast was great. Look, Chris the Pine might, was he might phenomenal. be a piece of shit otherwise, but he did exceptionally well in the movie. Yeah, uh, that my Chris Pine ran is for another show. Um, but uh, anyway, Patty Jenkins, fantastic. Um, so. We are introduced to this idea 
through a little a little teaser trailer, if you will. It's not even really a trailer. It's just a little tease kind of vignette, I guess, where she's she's talking to a camera that's following her around. She was uh, rollerblading in a parking lot, it looks like. And she starts talking about how her father was a fighter pilot. Uh, he, he used to fly F-4s. Mm -hmm. And how she's been wanting for like her whole like professional life, wanting to make a movie about fighter pilots to honor her dad. And she's been considering this pro project, considering that project, and like just nothing felt right. And then finally, a project landed in her lap that she felt like she could tell the story she wanted to tell that would, that would elevate fighter pilots to a place where she would truly feel like she could do her father justice, do, do her father's legacy justice, right, and honor her dad. And then while she's saying this, you see that she's she's putting on a an orange jumpsuit, like an orange uh, fighter pilot jumpsuit, and putting on a helmet, and then she walks off into the the distance and you, there's like a cg uh x-wing fighter in the background that she's walking to and then it says you know it's got you know rogue squadron you know coming right. december 2023 um <clears throat> super hype dude like she's the right director for this uh i don't know when this movie's gonna be set what the plot is gonna be i don't know what characters we're gonna be is it, are, is it gonna be brand new is it gonna be wedge and tilly's luke skywalker maybe i don't know you we don't can... know you could literally put this movie as just a live action or semi live action version of the Rogue Squadron 3D video game, and I'd still be in. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but Patty Patty Jenkins is helming this thing. Could not be more excited about this property. Like it's it's great. It's great. Fucking fantastic. In fact, um, if you guys want to follow along, live viewers, I'm putting this in the chat. This is the this is the link. Uh, to the Lucasfilm announcement, you guys can go one by one with us. Um, so right. next up, we've got we've got an untitled Taika Waititi film. Um, we've known about this for a while. This isn't really an announcement. I guess it's just a, a a reaffirming that yes, we're still doing the the Taika thing. Um, so nothing new. We don't know anything about this, but I'm fucking stoked to have Taika direct something Star Wars. Um, Taika for for you guys that. You may or may not know, Taika Waititi is the guy that directed Thor Ragnarok, which is, in my opinion, the best MCU movie that exists. Um, he's good. also the the half of the the brain brain um, trust behind what we do in the shadows, which is one of the greatest things that has ever fucking been created ever, either movie or TV show, especially TV show. Ugh, love it. Um, Taika is wonderful. <laughs> He's also directed an episode of uh, The Mandalorian in season one, and he was the voice actor for IG-11 in The Mandalorian. Uh, anyway, Taika Waititi, he's, he's a proven quantity. I, I love him. I adore him. His creativity is just amazing. He's great. Um... Look up his IMDb. If like, if you haven't seen anything in his in his IMDb list, like, shame on you. Just pick anything, watch it, and I, I guarantee you're gonna enjoy it. And if you don't, like, I will I will pay for your movie ticket, your your Prime subscription, whatever it is. Um, I will pay for it because I'm that sure that you will love Taika Waititi. So I'm super thrilled, even though we know nothing about what Taika's movie is gonna be. I'm so in. I'm fucking in. All right. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes. So we, we've known for a while that this was coming. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So so Ewan McGregor is reprising his role as Obi-Wan from the prequels. Um, amazingly and just like wonderful. Like he's, he's the age now. Like he is age appropriate. The actor Ewan McGregor is age appropriate compared to... Sir Alec Guinness, who played the original Obi-Wan, the old Obi-Wan from mm -hmm. the original Star Wars movies, right? He's age-appropriate in the timeline to be that guy. Right. Like, it's it's too perfect. It is, it, it's too perfect. It's... I was looking forward this, to this already, but the, the major announcement that they had was that, that Hayden Christensen is going to reprise his role as Darth Vader in this series. 
what? How can this be? We don't know. We don't know. Uh, but Deborah Chow is the director. Uh, she's done a couple of episodes in The Mandalorian, so she's a proven Star Wars director. Um, she's great. Um, I, I was already looking forward to this. Like, my, my, my excitement could not go any higher unless you announce that Hayden Christensen is reprising his role as Darth Vader. I don't know what that means. I don't know if he's going to, like, if Darth Vader in full armor is going to show up to fight Obi-Wan or if it's going to be flashback scenes, Obi-Wan remembering his time with his apprentice, right. Anakin Skywalker. I don't know if it's going to be, like, some kind of, like, force, through the force communication between old master and old apprentice and how you know, much of a redemption know. could this be for you for the prequels so i'm one of those guys that while the prequels were coming out i had no ill will whatsoever i was like my dick was hard in the movie theater for all three of those films yeah um i like it's it's on rewatches that you start to find flaws right so okay. like and then over the over the years like Oh, I say over the years. Like, Jar Jar Binks was annoying, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I could have done without him, mm -hmm. but I overlooked him completely in, in light of just, first of all, new Star Wars. Right. The pod race. Darth Maul. Uh, we know what the word Sith means now. You know, like, we, we've got to look at the Jedi Order and what that is. Like, I was over whelmed with with all of the positive things that were in episode one that i overlooked the flaws to include jar jar and all you know midichlorian yeah fuck all that shit like that that all took a back seat to my just being just so happy that star wars was back mm -hmm. uh, it was later that i started to critique it and pick it apart now i can if i'm watching episode one now like i feel like i had to fast forward through you know and just get to scenes that i actually like um, but most of the rest of the prequels, it, it, like, I'm still good with. So I how much of redemption could this be for you? Um, I don't, I don't see it as a redemption. Like, like episode three, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Like I, I've got no problems with that movie. Mm. Like that movie is fine. It's fine. Um, I don't feel like Hayden Christensen needs to be redeemed. I don't feel like the prequels need to be redeemed. I like I'm. There's no redemption here for me. What What about you? Are do you feel that that they need to be redeemed? Is Is there a potential here for Hayden to redeem the prequels? I am not in. I'm I'm in a similar boat as you. I thought midichlorians were dumb, and I don't think they were explained well enough to be concrete evidence of stupidity. So I'm willing to brush them off. And Jar Jar was like they don't say the midichlorians cause the force; they just say that they're 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 present when was, force powers are present. Like, it was it was a device. It was a device to measure the, right. the amount of force power. But, that's that's all. It was. That's really all yeah. It was. But it didn't it, correlation and causation weren't explicitly explained. So I'm okay with them. Like it's it's an indicator. It's not a cause. I'm good with it. Um, right. Jar Jar was annoying, but yeah. not so much that I can't watch it again. I maybe I'm just not as not enough of a Star Wars fan. I still enjoy the prequels. I'm okay with them. I I enjoy no, them. No, no, no. You you're more of a Star Wars fan. Like yeah. I think, like people they're like, no, fucking Episode Eight was complete trash, and I can't like Star Wars anymore. I, like I think you liking all of the movies, I think makes you more of a Star Wars fan than the fucking. I, I do. I like all nine of them. I understand they have yeah. their flaws, but I like all of them. Like fuck it, they're it's a good goddamn story from all start of, to finish. Literally, all of them have problems. Episode four, episode five, like they got problems. I would say that Episode um, four is harder to rewatch than Episode two. Really? Yes. Because of two things. One, either you're watching the really old version and it's just shit quality and that distracts you, or you're watching the remastered version and the remastering is shit application, so that bothers you. Oh my god, hot takes there. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna engage you on that. Um all right, so are you excited about seeing Hayden in the Obi Wan series? I am. Uh, what, what was it uh, when when the last three movies came out? Uh, Mark Hamill was the same age as Alec Guinness, Guinness for episode yes. one, and now you have another age tie-in here. Like, 
I'm down, dude. Like I love that shit. Yeah, it's great. I I, I can't wait. All right, next Squid, up, we've Squid's got yelling me. Good. Squid's yelling me at the, in the chat about blasphemy because I said that episode four was hard to rewatch. Uh, fuck off. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can watch it as much as you want, but everybody has everybody has their deal, man. And, and the quality of episode four is just doesn't doesn't swing it my way anymore. If they if they re yeah. If they re-recorded well, it, it'd be fine. If they remastered it without all the extra shit that Lucas decided to just toss in there for no fucking reason, I would be down. But no, I it's it's the least rewatchable of all of them because of those differences. Oh wow, wow. Um, Curtis pretty much mirrors my thoughts. I, he says I have so many mixed feels about the prequels. Yeah, that, that's pretty much me. All right, enough. next up we've got Ahsoka. So this is a limited series. So probably like a. I don't know, eight or 10 episode arc that's going to be um, on Disney Plus focused on the character of Ahsoka, which we got to see in The Mandalorian a few weeks ago. Um, and this is Rosario Dawson again. Yes. Reprising yes. the role. Play, yeah. Yep. Rosario Dawson is continuing to play Ahsoka. Uh, it's written by Dave Filoni, which honestly, Dave Filoni's got my trust so much that if you just say written by Dave Filoni, I don't give a fuck. I'm investing. I'm investing. Mm -hmm. Like, like I will open my wallet to anything that says written by Dave Filoni. That's how much trust I have in that man. He he has guided uh, the the Clone Wars animated series, Rebels animated series. Um, he is one, like basically one half of the creative force behind the Mandalorian. Uh, this man is like he is Star Wars. Like Star Wars runs through his blood. Like there's George Lucas, and then there's Dave Filoni, and like, he's teaming up with John Favreau again. Yes, exactly. Right. So I've got I've got ultimate trust in in this. I and I love Ahsoka as a character. I've 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 known her as a character for like a decade now, right. and she's only gotten better and better as time has gone on. And I I was thrilled a few weeks ago when she appeared on The Mandalorian in live action for the first time. R Rosara Dawson. I adore Rosario Dawson already. Yeah. And then she gets to play Ahsoka and she nailed it. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I cannot fucking wait for All this. Right. What about Lando? Oh, we're going to wait, hold on, hold on. Before we get to Lando, one more oh, thing. Oh, no, I missed one. Yeah, we got Rangers of, the, Rangers of the New Republic. So this one is a little bit of a mystery. Uh, we know that, that, that Favreau and Filoni are going to executive produce this one as well. And it's called Rangers of the New Republic. It, That's it. That's it's it. Set, That's all we've got. It's That's set within got. the timeline of the Mandalorian. So this is like, this is like a spinoff of a show. That's a spinoff from some movies. Like this, I ah, oh, this is. I just I love. It's probably set like five ish years after Return of the Jedi. That's that's basically all we know. About. You you Rangers know New... you know when you talk about a topic, you usually talk about it. It's either. It's either uh, uh, narrow and deep or shallow and wide. And Star Wars, up until the last couple of years, has been fairly narrow but very deep. Like you can you can dive into Star Wars, but there's just not a lot of broad spectrum. And they are just they're they're not even filling in the gaps. They are completing the universe with all these projects. And this is just one more where they're taking something yeah. we already like and just filling that out even further. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. I, yeah. We don't, we don't have any idea what the plot of this is going to be, but, but the Doesn't team of Favre, like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm totally in. All right. Next up, this one excites the fuck out of me. Lando. Okay. We don't get a lot of information about this. We know that Justin Simeon, is going to be the showrunner for it. Um, so he did Dear White People, but like beyond that, I don't know a whole lot of his like um, like his 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 uh, background. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Um, but that's really all we know, right? Uh, but what I want, like, I, please, please, Lucasfilm, please, Disney, give this to me. What I want this show to be. Amos, did you ever watch the young Indiana Jones Chronicles from like the late 80s, early 90s? Uh, I watched 
some of it, but not a lot. Yeah. So basically what it was, you have old Indiana Jones, like old man, like literally, like he was like, you know, 90 years old or some shit. Mm -hmm. Old man with an eye patch, Indiana Jones talking about how, like, oh, I remember, I remember when I was a young man and did this great thing, right? And then it would flash back to when he was a kid or when he was like a, you know, like a 20 year old or whatever, mm -hmm. doing like his first fucking Indiana Jones adventures and all that kind of shit. Right. I want land, I want the Lando series to be the same way. I want Billy D. Williams to open each episode where he's, he's having a conversation with somebody. Perhaps the ex stormtrooper lady from Rise of Skywalker. That would be cool. Uh, but it, whoever, you got Billy D. Williams talking to somebody, and he and he starts with, "Did I ever tell you about the time of you know whatever?" Or or or, "Did I ever tell you about my maneuver at the Battle of Tanab?" Right. Like, like please, 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 can we do that? And then. As he starts to tell the story, he gets two sentences into his story, and then we flash to Donald Glover in the past, you know, fifty years ago or whatever, doing the thing, like doing the the narrated story uh, from Billy D. Williams. I adore my. Prob I loved a lot of things about the movie Solo, but probably the greatest thing to me was Donald Glover's performance as Lando. I fucking loved it. I love Donald Glover. I love the character of Lando. Billy D. Williams is still with us, and I love him too. Like, can we please? Can we please? Can we please? <laughs> I'm begging you, Kathleen Kennedy, uh, 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 Justin Simeon, Billy D. Williams, Donald Glover, all of you, please, 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 can we get the Lando series that I'm envisioning? I need it. Andor. All right, Andor. So this is the series about Cassian Andor. This was announced a while back, but we got a little sneak peek. They call it a sizzle reel, but it's really like kind of a eh, behind the scenes of the like first week of shooting or whatever. Uh, so so Cassian Andor is a character that we were introduced to in Rogue One, uh, which Rogue One is probably my favorite movie of the new, like the Disney era Star Wars movies. I fucking love Rogue One. And one of my favorite characters from that is Cassian Andor. He's a he's a spy, basically. He he's a spy for the rebellion before the rebellion was like fully formed as the rebellion, right? Right. And um, he's great. He's played by Diego Luna. By the way, Diego Luna is one of the most adorable people that I've ever fucking seen ever. Like, just watch a uh, a candid interview with him, or just like whatever, and tell me that he's not adorable. And I will tell you that you're wrong. Um, the man's great. Like he he's fantastic. He he's he's wonderful as the character of Cassian Andor. I'm really excited about the storyline that this is going to be. It's, it's going to take place, I think, like five ish years prior to um, Rogue One. Mm. Uh, so so I'm expecting the show to be kind of dark. Uh, where he goes around like doing like you know spycraft stuff and like probably some assassinations and some work, you know, behind the scenes, kind of, you know, shadowy, you know, all this stuff for the, the fledgling rebellion. Um, man, uh, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of people involved with this. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård is, is going to be in there. Oh, Genevieve O'Reilly is going to reprise her role as Mon Mothma. She was in Rogue One. She was also in the prequels as Mon Mothma. Um, that's pretty exciting. Also, uh, Alan Tudyk is going to reprise his role as K2SO, the droid that was always with Cassian. Um, I, I love Alan Tudyk. Like, whatever he's in, I'm yeah. going to watch it. You won so, me at Alan Tudyk. Yeah, exactly. So Andor, Andor is one of the things I'm most looking forward to. Lando is probably top of my, my list if it's the format. Like, if they announce that it's the format that If it's that the I dream team that you want, yeah. Yeah, um, right. but, about, but as stated, Andor is probably my number one right now. How about Acolyte? Okay, so the Acolyte is interesting. So so Lucasfilm has announced, uh, probably about six to nine months ago, announced this concept called High Republic. Uh, which, do you remember back when we were in high school, Amos, uh, not Dark Empire, uh, Shadows of the Empire? Mm-hmm. 
So Shadows of the Empire was a multimedia event that was happening in the Star Wars universe, right? There was novels. Oh, oh, do you remember who wrote the novel for Shadows of the Empire? Oh. Oh, that might be our friend. That might be our good friend and multiple time guest on the Ritual Magic Podcast. Wouldn't he a singer? Well, okay, not that Steve Perry. Oh. We're talking about our friend and and the, the renowned science fiction and fantasy author Steve Perry. Yeah. I always uh, I, I always just think he's singing as he's writing books. It's <laughs> um, I'm sure he has a ready quip for the, for a response for that. Yeah. Um but anyway, so so when we were teenagers, uh uh Shadows of the Empire was the thing. The current thing that's about to launch now is called High Republic. And this takes place roughly like 200 years before the prequels right so this is like the height of the republic before like before sidious's time before he starts to like this is before this is before big orange took over oh wait no that's now sorry i right well you're not wrong um yeah so this is like the height of the republic uh so so yoda is probably the only character that we might see in in High Republic properties uh, that, that we already know. Uh, so it's this giant multimedia thing that's going to happen. And the Acolyte is the first live action thing or, or, or video even thing that has been announced in uh, to take place in the High Republic era. So we don't know much about this, except they say that it's going to be a mystery thriller. Uh, um, Curtis, it, Curtis says, oh, it's not the Republic while high. They leave that up to you. Hey, um, I'm not saying you're wrong. I mean, all of it can I be the high Republic wrong. if you if you indulge a little bit before watching. Right. Yeah. I, 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 uh, yeah. I'm not going to shame anybody. All right. So high Republic, this is the first uh, the first uh, video property to be announced for that. So that's that's pretty exciting in its own right. Um, okay. And also to have a mystery thriller, sounds like it's going to be a little bit dark, and I'm all about dark stuff. Like, like Empire Strikes Back was one of my favorite movies of all time because of how dark it got. Uh, so, The Bad Batch. So this is the next animated series from Lucasfilm. Uh, we've got a full trailer for it. And in fact, if you watch season seven of The Clone Wars uh, that was released not that long ago, really. Um, the first uh, four, I think it was a four episode arc um, of that final season. It was basically like a soft, um, soft, la- soft, soft, um, what am I trying to say? Soft launch, soft introduction, soft yep. penis. Yep. Soft penis. No. Um, Got you excited. Here we go. Soft pilot, basically. It was basically a soft pilot for for this uh, series, The Bad Batch. So, the final season of, of Clone Wars, we get introduced to the Bad Batch. So, this is basically genetically imperfect clones uh, of Jango Fett, right? So, troopers were clones of, of Jango Fett. Uh, these were genetically imperfect, but their imperfections actually became strengths, right? So they were they became specialists in in different things. So it, it's a uh, motley crew, if you will, of clone troopers that are called in as kind of like a last resort. Like we we don't have any other way to solve this problem. It's like the A team. Think the A team, but clone troopers, right? This is the Bad Batch. Um, it's pretty cool it's pretty good it's exciting um and the the trailer looks pretty good and it makes very clear that this is in the post order 66 era because we literally see a scene in the trailer from episode three of the emperor saying you know the the whole thing of the you know the first galactic empire like that scene is in the bad batch uh, so it's going to be after Order 66, once the clones turned against the Jedi and all that. Mm-hmm. But we already know that the Bad Batch have had their chips removed so that they don't get the Order 66. So 
I think we're going to see the Bad Batch, like, sabotaging and fighting against the clone troopers, which by the time we get to episode four, there's not really any clone troopers left because the stormtroopers are not the same thing. They're not... Um, yeah, so maybe the bad Spoilers. Big, uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, how about Star Wars Visions? So this is one of the weird ones to me. So th this is a, an anthology series, I guess, that's going to be um, different Star Wars stories that are uh, presented in the style of Japanese animation. So we, we get some anime style Star Wars going on. Um, I'm all about it. I don't know enough about it to even like say much, except Star Wars anime style. I'm there, dude. I'm fucking in. Let's go. I'll give it a chance. A droid story. All right. So this, this is probably the, the one that I'm the least excited about, but probably just because I haven't been hyped up enough myself. So basically, this is a new character. We get a new character, but we're going to be guided through the journey by R2-D2 and C-3PO. Cool. I'm there. I'm going to watch it. Uh, but I feel like this is probably going to be aimed at younger audiences like mm, yeah this seems you know, this seems five, uh, six years old, this seems, kind of thing seems I, a little little soft yeah uh, i'll watch it i i will totally watch it um but i i think that honestly that's probably the weakest of the announcements yeah um so so that's it for star wars but we've got uh we've got a couple other things to me indiana uh, jones so we've got a new Indiana Jones movie. We've got Indiana Jones 5, yet untitled, right? With, it's going with, to have... With Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. Harrison Ford is going to uh, reprise his character. Thank God. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm excited about that. We're, we're looking at um, July 2022 yep. release for that. So we're a ways off. We're a little ways off. We're about a year and a half or so away from and, release, I'm pretty excited about it. And a Willow but, sequel. So this is the one. This is the one that's got me freaking, like, just dancing. Like, I can't wait to see this thing. I've been waiting for decades now. Like, Willow is, like I told you earlier, uh, this is why I made the game w about Willow. Willow is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen this movie so many freaking times. I've seen this movie only fewer times than probably Star Wars. The 1989 Batman. That might be it, actually. <laughs> like, well, it might be number three. Um, uh, this movie, this movie was so great. The movie came out in 1988. Uh, Ron Howard directed it. Uh, Ron Howard is actually, from my understanding, is going to be an executive producer on on this on this film, or I'm sorry, on this series. Uh, this is going to be a Disney Plus series. Mm -hmm. It's going to come out in 2022. And um, Warwick Davis will return in his role. Yes, so Warwick Davis is going to reprise his character of you Will know, the, Willow the, of Good. Yep, and it's going to be in. And um, like continuity wise, it's gonna be the same as like real time that has passed, right? So like thirty years, uh, right. thirty years later, whatever, thirty plus years, um, where Willow is now uh, like a great sorcerer. Um, it like it's God, I cannot, I cannot wait for this. I've I've been I've been wanting more Willow stuff. Ever since 1988. And, and this has John Chu directing the pilot episode, which yeah. he's from no, uh, Crazy Rich Asians, which I thought was an okay movie, but people that are into that style of movie really fucking loved. Yeah. So so we've got a, a, acclaimed directors, of course, because like anything Lucasfilm, like a lot of people, like a lot of super fans want to have their beefs and talk about whatever. Right. Um, Lucasfilm carries the the prestige that every everyone in Hollywood wants to be involved with Lucasfilm properties, and this is just further proof of that. Um, yeah, John John Chu is I'm sure I I trust I hope 
that he's going to do the Willow property justice. Um, the fact that Warwick Davis in, is involved just has me over the moon. I, I can't see this thing happening without uh, Warwick's um, involvement. But man, I I am just beyond thrilled for all of this. Awesome. <sighs> All right, man. Um, if people want to know more of your thoughts and keep up on things as they go through the the production process and hear all of your excitement, where can they go? Twitter, man. RM underscore Del Noche. What about you, dude? I am going to direct everyone to anthonylemos.com. You can, mm. From there, you can see some of my photography, read my blog, which has uh, it's been a little lax lately because of all the family stuff going on. Um, but uh, you can also find my Twitter, my Facebook, all that other stuff there. So just anthonylemos.com. And if you're wondering who Anthony Lemos is, that's one of my many names. Yep. And, uh, and your photography is definitely worth visiting that site but just by itself. So definitely check that out, anthonylemos.com. Yep. And if you register for the site and then let me know that you registered, I'll add you to my friend's uh, group, which gives you some, some more, some more uh, access to other photos that I don't just share with the public. Excellent. That explains why I couldn't get into certain posts. Because <laughs> you didn't fucking register. Like the site tells you, you have to register when you can't see some shit. Also, please go to ritualmisery <laughs> dot com for uh, for links to all the things that we do and uh, and uh, at ritual misery on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, and you can always join us, join the conversation on our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. We go live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific or 6.30 p.m. Pacific if you want to hang out for us w during the cocktail hour on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kim McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this, well... It's been your Rich Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Oh, where's that button? It, oh, you don't have it in a supercut? It 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 didn't work. Oh it, no. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y